Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video we're going to talk about how can Australia's central bank, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the RBA, how can the RBA affect Australia's exchange rates? Now, while we're focusing on Australia, I think that the principles here could apply to any central bank. How does the central bank try and change the level of the exchange rate if it's not too happy with that level. All right, we're going to look at the specific strategies that a central bank can use and there's no more intro that is required. So let's get started. Okay, so here we go. We're talking about how does the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, Australia's central bank, affect the level of exchange rates. Now, if we rewind back in time and we're thinking about some earlier concepts in exchange rates, that Australia has a Australia has a floating exchange rate system, ER here just being an abbreviation for exchange rates. So what's happened here is that the value of the Australian dollar is allowed to float cleanly. And what we mean by cleanly is that, what we mean is that market forces and not intervention by government, reserve bank, no one, determines the value of the Australian dollar. So generally the Australian dollar is allowed to float cleanly without intervention, clean meaning pure market forces, generally. But it's just this point that there is not that level of intervention. But in Australia, actually, we might get exceptions that the RBA may intervene in the Forex market, Forex being foreign exchange, to affect the value of the Australian dollar. That the RBA may intervene into this clean float. So the RBA can really change the value of the Australian dollar. Sorry, <laughs> the RBA can attempt to change the value of the Australian dollar with two strategies. Number one, the RBA, let's get a highlighter. Number one, the RBA can actually intervene in the foreign exchange market. It can get its hands dirty by trying to change the value of the Australian dollar. And this we call dirtying the float. And dirtying the float is a direct form of intervention. I don't know why there are two brackets here, please. Don't worry about that. So we will talk about direct intervention. But the RBA could also adjust monetary policy. Remember monetary policy, the level of the cash rate, which will then indirectly affect the level of interest rates in the economy. It could change monetary policy to affect the value of the Aussie dollar. Now, I'd like you to be aware that this is a pretty rare strategy for the RBA to change interest rates with the specific goal of changing the value of the Aussie dollar. But this is an indirect form of intervention. So we've got two main strategies that we're going to look at in this video. Okay, let's start with number one. So our first strategy is that the RBA can intervene in the foreign exchange market by dirtying the float. Now, this is not a term that I've just made up. This is a, an economics term that you could use with economists and they would know what you were talking about. And that when we're talking about dirtying the float, that it's important you're aware that this is a direct form of intervention. The RBA is going directly, sorry, the RBA is going directly into the foreign exchange market to intervene and to try and change the value of the Australian dollar. So if we're thinking about this, what does dirty the float mean? If we dirty the float, the RBA intervenes in the value of the Aussie dollar. So it does not leave it purely to market forces. So in these situations, let's get a highlighter here. In these situations, the Australian dollar is no longer in a clean float. Clean being market forces, no intervention. Instead, the float becomes dirty because the RBA is getting its hands dirty to try and change the value of the Aussie dollar. So we move in this part from a clean float to a dirty float. Now, 
In this strategy, the RBA can either try and do two things. Notice how I've said it can seek to. Because of the huge amount of foreign currency traded every day, it is very difficult for the RBA to change the value exactly the way it would like and for a long period of time. But this is what it is trying to do. If the RBA would like to boost the value of the Australian dollar, essentially cause an appreciation, that the RBA would do this. The RBA would seek to buy Australian dollars and sell foreign exchange. The RBA has a big reserve of foreign exchange that it can use just for these purposes. So it might sell Japanese yen, US dollars, Chinese yuan, um, all sorts of other currencies to then use that money to buy Australian dollars and hopefully cause that higher demand for the Australian dollar and lead to a higher value for the Australian currency. Now, if you are demonstrating this, it would be very useful to draw that graph to demonstrate you understand that process. Now, let's just flip pens. We'll just flip the script here. So let's say that the RBA wants to reduce the value of the uh, Australian dollar, cause a depreciation. So if the RBA wants the dollar to go down in value, it would do this. It would sell Australian dollars and use that money to buy foreign exchange instead and build up its currency reserves. But essentially by doing this, that the RBA is going to help to increase the supply of Australian dollars, increase the, the number of Australian dollars in the market because it is selling them to buy foreign exchange and to reduce the value of the Aussie dollar. So this is the RBA's strategy of dirtying the float, of intervening in those market forces. And just to remind you that this is a form of direct intervention. The RBA is getting its hands dirty. It's not paying someone else to do its dirty work. Okay, let's look at the second strategy that could be used. Okay. So the RBA can also intervene in the foreign exchange market by changing monetary policy. So this time the RBA is not getting its hands dirty. And for that reason, we would call this indirect intervention. And we call it indirect intervention because this is kind of how it works. That the RBA step one will change the cash rate. This delta is uh, the Greek is a Greek letter and also symbolizes change. Then as a result of the change in cash rate, interest rates will change. And then as a result of the change in interest rates, the value of the Aussie dollar will change. So it's super indirect because the RBA is acting here and there's another two steps before the value of the Australian dollar changes. So if we look at this uh, more formally, the RBA can also indirectly intervene. So our indirect intervention in the Forex market by changing the level of interest rates through domestic market operations. And that's monetary policy. And there's a video, you can click that link somewhere above my head to explore more about monetary policy if you need to. So if we think about it here, that we have a very specific change in monetary policy to create a potential effect on the Aussie dollar. So let's, uh, let's split that up. So the first situation is, let's say we've got uh, higher interest rates. So we've got, we've got contractionary monetary policy. Then if there are higher interest rates, that creates greater incentive for people to save in Australia. So what we're saying here is with higher interest rates, there's increased saving in Australia because people will receive higher returns. If people receive higher returns, more people will want to invest. So there is increasing demand for the Australian dollar, which will lead to an appreciation of the Aussie dollar. So that change in monetary policy, that step one, will hopefully lead to that appreciation, that step three. Now let's look at uh, the flip side, right? So if we choose blue here, so let's say that the RBA decides to reduce interest rates. 
So we have expansionary monetary policy. If we've got a situation of reduced interest rates, right, rather than having increased returns, that will lead to lower returns. A lower interest rate will create lower returns. So as a result, there will be a decreased demand for Aussie dollars. People won't want them as much because uh, the returns are lower. That will lead to a lower value of the Australian dollar. So what we're essentially saying here is that the RBA could increase interest rates to increase the Aussie dollar or decrease interest rates to reduce it. So let's just put this here. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about indirect intervention, that we're talking about this kind of approach. Okay, but what I would really like you to note, and why don't we put this in a highlighter just to signify that, is that the RBA rarely, geez, if ever, changes monetary policy with the goal of changing the value of the Australian dollar. That is rarely, rarely, rarely the goal of changes in monetary policy, right? The RBA is trying to do other things rather than change the value of the currency. But what it is worth noting is the RBA will take account of the value of the Australian dollars, a uh, value of the Australian dollar when changing monetary policy. So if it's going to raise interest rates, it might think about the fact that that will increase demand for the Australian dollar, could make exports less competitive, slow down economic growth. But that's not its primary concern. Okay, so in this video, we looked at how the RBA can affect the level of exchange rates. Remember the two strategies we talk about, one is dirtying the float. That's the most common, that's the most useful to know about. But also remember number two, that the RBA can change monetary policy to have that indirect effect on exchange rates. All right, so uh, if it's been useful, why don't you like, think about subscribing, think about leaving me a nice comment or any ideas for future videos you might wanna see. And as always, thanks for watching.